Hi guys and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to be working strictly out of the Silhouette Studio and I'm going to be showing you a couple really neat tips. Um, we're going to be going over using the trace tool. We're going to be going over releasing compound path so you can separate your image pieces here. We're going to be talking about arranging so that it cuts so you can transfer this onto a piece of wood and have a complete image. We're going to talk about layering so you can um, paint one image and then put another piece of vinyl on top of it and paint that image. Um, we're going to talk about welding. We're going to talk about grouping. We're going to talk about using our knife tool and I'm going to discuss Oracle 631 vinyl. I'm going to show you your cut settings here and I'm going to talk about loading your media. So I hope that you stay tuned for this awesome tutorial. But if you click on your image here and you drag it out, I think I'm going to go ten and a half in height and stop there. So you can see it'll be ten and a half inches tall. And I'm going to go ahead and go up here in the corner to trace. This is just a cross image so we still have to trace it in order for our silhouette machine to know where to cut. So go ahead and select your trace area here. What I like to do is I always take my scale down as low as it'll go, down to four, and then I take my high pass filter all the way up until it selects all of the cross. And for this, I can just go trace outer edge, but typically if I'm tracing a, an intricate image or um, letters, words, things like that, then I would do trace inside and outside so that you don't lose like the inside of the O or things like that um, for your image. So let's go trace outside and we can go ahead and delete the cross. And if you click on this again it's going to give you better measurements. So now it's saying my total image is going to be ten and a half inches tall, just shy, and then it's going to be 7.1 inches wide. Now I have already created some of my floral images here. I'm just going to copy and paste onto my cross. And I think that's going to be a little bit big. I want it to add to it but not overwhelm the image. And I'm going to do Command V to paste. That's going to look really pretty. Now I've already set these up to work for my cross. You can see that um, I have them set up just enough to go underneath. Actually, I think I'm going to turn it this way. I wanted to add some pretty details but not overwhelm the cross. It's just a nice little accent here. Now if you're not sure how to create these little flower images, you would take a simple flower. Let me show you on this one here. So if I took this flower and I made it really big and say I wanted it to sit up against the cross but I didn't want all these leaves to stick out and over my cross, what I would do is come to release compound path by, I right clicked here, 
And now it separates each of these little lines, these cuts, into individuals. And so I can take out this leaf and this leaf. And maybe I just want to move this leaf around, have it go that way. But that's how you would create um, your floral image to kind of hug on your cross and not be overlapping it. So that looks good like that. And a couple other things we're going to add are dragonflies. And these two of them are going to be flying and two of them are going to be sitting on the cross. Now I'm going to do this part separate once we get onto the piece of wood, once our silhouette image has been cut out. Um, so I'm not going to go through this part, but I'm just showing you what it would look like to arrange it here. If you arrange it ahead of time where you like it, when you apply this vinyl to your piece of wood, it's going to make it much easier to lay it out properly and it's going to look really nice. Um, I'm actually going to be doing some layering because I want to have these flowers here and then I'm going to have a little dragonfly sit here and because I'm probably going to have a tail overlap somewhere or some wings overlap, I don't want to put them on top of each other. If I did, it would make a mess of cutting it out uh, and weeding it. Um, another thing you can do is you can select both of those and you can say weld and it will put them together but as you can see it's actually going to take apart all of the rows here and then I'm losing my line of the dragonfly so when I'm going in there with the paint it's going to be harder to tell where my dragonfly is supposed to end and my rose is supposed to start so I'm not going to do that now I'm going to hit control Z to undo and again so that they are back as their own images and I'm going to delete that guy because we don't need him to get cut out. Now, I'm not going to record this part, but I'm going to adjust a few things with my flowers. Um, I'm going to add in a couple extra leaves here or petals, maybe another flower here, just to kind of balance it out. Um, I want it to be close to the cross, but I don't want blank space. I have my flowers where I like them now. I'm just going to show you how I'm adding one dragonfly. I copy and pasted him in here. And I'm going to use this knife tool right here. And if you look to the right, if you did the outline cut, it would just cut right through. But if you do the solid cut, it will actually redo your cut for you. So that when it separates those wings that are on the right from the wings and the body that are on the left, it's going to leave a cut line. So when I have it print out, it'll still cut through there where I can peel off the dragonfly. So I'm going to select this guy here, delete him, delete him. And now I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to group so that they are considered one image. I'm going to flip vertical because I want him to be facing up and I'm going to put him right there on the cross. Now the other one that I'm going to have sitting on the cross I'm probably going to put up here on the shoulder and it's going to be kind of on top of those flowers so as I said, I'm not going to place him there right now. I'm going to layer him. I'm going to do a separate cut with the other three dragonflies. And that's going to just overlay on top of these flowers. It'll be really pretty. Okay, we're going to go up here to this guy for our cut settings. And I'm using vinyl, Oracle 631. It's a one-time use vinyl and um, what's really cool about it is if you were to set down your vinyl 
you stick it down and it's just not perfect, it allows you to peel it back up gently and re relay it. So um, you don't have to have it the perfect the first time. It is not a permanent vinyl. And okay, it's telling me that I need to set my blade at a 1. It's going to have a speed of 5. I always drop this down to like a 2. Um, sometimes my machine just rushes through the cuts and for something detailed like these roses, I don't want it to rush through because it, um, it's going to have very, very fine cuts in between these petals here and I don't want to lose those by the blade just skipping on through. I mean it's, it's very accurate but at the same time um, I have seen it mess up really detailed cuts like this and I also make sure to have a fairly new blade um, in my machine if it's an older blade maybe I've cut out construction paper with it it gets dulled pretty quickly so I'm using a newer blade that I've used specific I use specifically for detailed cuts and that's what I'm gonna use now and then we go ahead and click send to silhouette if you're not sure about your settings um, you can do a test cut right here and it's gonna create it's just gonna make a tiny cut right here in the corner of your vinyl. Oh, and also, when I load my machine with my vinyl, I never pre-cut it, and I I load media instead of load cut mat. Um, it's really easy just to leave the whole roll of your vinyl on there and then cut it after, because if you cut it too short and those rollers don't grab, the vinyl is going to slide all around on your machine, and your cuts are going to get messed up. So, and we don't want that to happen. So, now we're going to go ahead and cut this out. Well, that is the end of our tutorial. Just keep in mind your next steps would be to weed your vinyl after it's cut, use transfer tape to place your vinyl on your piece of wood, paint, and you can check out our DIY farmhouse decor piece. Um, it gives you tips and tricks on how to paint using vinyl. And then lastly, once that's all dry, you remove your vinyl and you have your finished product. It's going to be beautiful. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks. Bye.